all right we are live and awesome so good evening everybody and welcome to the second live edition second live panel discussion uh conducted by uh, eo new delhi and these live sessions are done for gsea which is global student entrepreneurship awards uh what do we do in these live sessions is that we host industry leaders startup mentors successful entrepreneurs angel investors ecosystem partners ecosystem players and uh, all of these people come and share their thoughts here on the topic uh, that we choose and pick for the day uh today's topic is importance of mentoring and incubation in early stages of a startup so if you are anybody who is early stage entrepreneur if you are somebody who's a student entrepreneur uh this session is going to be very very beneficial for all of you guys uh quickly in one line if i can give you a brief about eo which is entrepreneurs organization so it's a highly uh, it's a high quality social uh, network of uh, more than 14000 plus like minded leaders across from 61 countries uh, every year eo conducts gsea which is a global premier competition for students uh, so ideally this competition is only for students and this is the competition where students who operate and own a business while studying in a college or a university they compete uh, both at a regional uh, local level and then they also compete at a national level and then a international level as well uh, gsc also supports students with mentorship recognition connections with investors with with the broader community which eventually helps them to take their business to the next level uh, i'm your host for the day my name is dil nawaz i run a company called power deck and i'll be moderating the session for all of you today uh, i have got three fantastic speakers with me today uh let me quickly introduce each one of them and then we will get started our first speaker is varun so varun is the builder of a organization called build3 build3 is a startup studio that build impact builds impact oriented startups that better the mind body and the earth Varun brings in over two decades of experience and has been the founder at 91 springboard previously which is a pioneer of co-working spaces in india our second speaker is vipul vipul runs wow jobs a delhi a dubai and a delhi headquartered a uh, headquartered search firm which has presence across africa europe and middle east earlier he was a partner in an edtech firm evc he is incubating multiple businesses focusing on hr spaces which include hum hum a platform for helping retired people getting jobs and other related information and wen which is women entrepreneurs network which is a platform for lady entrepreneurs who are looking to offer services like hr content etc to corporate clients our third speaker for the day is dr isha Dr Isha is an awardee of the Eminent Educationist Award uh, Asia Pacific Gold Star Award Young Women Educators and Scholar Awards and Excellence Awards uh, she was also selected for Rajiv uh, Rajiv Gandhi Education Excellence Award and Bharat uh, Vidya Shiromani Award she has been awarded 32 honors and awards in her work that he has, she has been doing for the ecosystem and entrepreneurship development she has published more than 16 patents 105 research papers and three books uh in international publications she is a phd in finance from in 2006 uh she is also uh, connected with i am indoor where she was invited for a consultancy to review uh institutional development plans under the world bank supported madhya pradesh higher education quality improvement project uh and she is currently serving as a professor and also the president for uh, uh in innovation Institu institutions innovation council at iilm university let me quickly add all these amazing people to the forum and we can then get started varun uh, welcome to the session vipul welcome to the session and dr isha welcome to the session uh, can all three of you hear me clearly yeah. awesome uh i hope all of you are pretty excited for this conversation today uh as i as i've already briefed the session is on importance of incubation and mentoring in early stages startup and uh let me throw in the first question uh i'll i'll rather ask varun to open and then i can ask vipul and dr isha to comment uh i have given some brief about who you are and what you do uh what do you do currently as a part of a ecosystem player as an ecosystem enabler and uh, uh how's how's the life been so quickly if you can comment on what are you what are you doing up to up to uh, uh, what are you doing right now how are you supporting entrepreneurs if you can quickly comment on onto that what will pass it to you sure thanks so much man uh, so basically um until 2 years ago uh, as you mentioned in my intro i was primarily working with and uh, 91 springboard creating co-working communities where people would primarily get work infrastructure but would also get access to um meeting other people and uh, improving their business outcomes together um 
at build three, we said, let's not treat this as an add-on to the infrastructure play. Let's make it primary. So how do we help startup founders who are early in their journey building amazing new sustainability and impact centric businesses, how can we help them with the necessary resources they need? Is it mentorship? Is it capital? Is it office space? Is it uh, getting an advisor on board? Is it a certain type of vendor or partner that they need? All of these things and much, much more. When founders have these questions, they rarely have the right resources easily accessible. And we said, we're going to be that partner that's readily uh, accessible for such founders. So we work with five to 10 such startups in the uh, technology product, services, as well as manufacturing and engineering spaces. So really quite broad. As long as your output is going to be better for the mind, better for the body, and better for the planet, we'd love to build with you. And we also bring our checkbooks to the table. And that's the reason it's called Build3, right? It is. Building <laughs> awesome. creatively, consciously, and through communities. Awesome. Vipul, I'll pass it to you. Same question. Uh, what are you uh, doing right now? What are you up to? And how are you supporting entrepreneurs? Uh, uh, I, I, I know you from quite some time also. I've been interacting with you. So I know uh, it's going to be... Uh, you, 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 you rather are up to a couple of things. Uh, you have a few cards up, to, up your sleeve. Uh, over to you. So uh, first of all, thank you. I'm super excited to be part of. I've been with EO now for 17 years, so it's good to see EO do this. Uh, uh, what what I do is uh, I invest in early stage startups in a personal capacity. I also run an early stage fund uh, focused on the education technology space. Uh, I have an accelerator or an incubator uh, uh, rolled into one where I'm incubating about 12 companies in the HR space. Uh, I work with a lot of, uh, you know, young entrepreneurs who come to me because uh, my background is from HR and I run a recruiting business. So I have a lot of entrepreneurs who come back, come up to me saying, you know, we want to quit our jobs and start uh, our own business. So I have like this group of people who constantly keep coming to me for mentoring. And I, I think that in a nutshell is what I do. Awesome. And uh, Dr. Isha, I'll pass it on to you. What are you doing these days? What are you up to now? Uh, you're on mute. Uh, wait a second. Okay. You'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So right now I am associated with the ILM University Guru Gram as a professor in finance. And along with this position, I am also handling the position of President Institutions Innovation Council, which is directly working under the guidance of Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell Government of India. So this has been established to systematically foster the culture of innovation among all higher educational institutions. And uh, the primary mandate obviously is to encourage, inspire and nurture young students by supporting them to work with new ideas and transfer them into prototypes while they are um, informative years. So uh, with ILM, uh, IIC, we got registered in 2019 to create a vibrant local innovation ecosystem. And we are successful in bringing four startups through IIC activities in the uh, last two years. And uh, we are having eight incubators with us. And we were awarded as a three-star rating from the Ministry of Education, Government of India. Even uh, the currently going on here, we have done around 35 activities related to startups, innovation, and entrepreneurship which resulted into eight incubators and the list is going on. So in this council, we are consisting of the faculty members, students, Penn University, and obviously industry mentors are also there, including some entrepreneurs. So ILM University, Gurugram gives a framework and specialized help to the understudies having imaginative plans to change into new products and services for the betterment of the society. And IIC ILM likewise helps all the applicants with mentoring, planning, and execution of their startup idea into a genuine business. Awesome. This is pretty interesting. And, and I was, in fact, uh, when this panel got formed, I was pretty excited to talk to all three of you because uh, what better panel 
uh, uh, then all three of you for this particular topic. So academic incubation, academic support, uh, the mindset shift in the university towards entrepreneurship. Uh, and then, of course, Varun, you have been, you know, uh, uh, working with so many entrepreneurs, running a co-working space for such a long time, being a pioneer in this, that space, uh, to be honest. Uh, so you bring in all of that experience. And of course, Vipul, you have been an investor yourself. I've seen you through and through working with so many uh, companies. I think it's a right mix to talk about incubation, mentoring and community support. So I think it's a it's a fantastic panel. Once again, thank thank you uh, all for for being here and and sparing your time. And uh, to everybody in the audience, folks, if you have a question about a, anything about startups in general, but of course anything around the topic incubation and mentoring, feel free to drop that question in the chat. We would love to answer that question for you. And uh, you can even direct your question to any of the three speakers present today, and we'll be more than happy to uh, answer that. Uh, with that, let me start with uh, you know, uh, Ravi Isha. I'll come to you first. Uh, maybe maybe because then I can I can go in, in a pipeline approach because you must be dealing with a very early stage student entrepreneurs or people who are into very, very early stages. Uh, in your opinion, uh, how do you think uh, or what or, or what, do we, what do you think is the role of academic incubators and uh, what kind of support are, are these incubators able to provide to early stage entrepreneurs? Your quick comment onto that. Okay, if I'm talking about the academic incubators of innovation and entrepreneurship, they are developed at universities to support the innovation and entrepreneurial mindset of the students. So incubators are also a supplement to the educational program in the field of activating the innovation and entrepreneurship of students. So basically an incubator is designed to provide a safe, controlled space to live while they are vital open startups. So unlike a simple Basinet, an incubator provides an environment that can be adjusted to provide the ideal temperature as well as the perfect amount of, you know, whatsoever they are requiring. It can be the mentoring, it can be the uh, planning, it can be the uh, experts advice, it can be the seed funding as well. So the incubation uh, center is a space for all the new age entrepreneurs and young minds to perform their innovative ideas into viable business propositions. And obviously, our primary mission is to facilitate a platform for budding entrepreneur to start a business venture within, you can say, the minimum risk. So incubator in an organization designed to help startup business grow and succeed by providing free or low cost workspace, then mentorship, then expertise, then access to investors, and in some cases, working capital in the form of a loan as well, including seed funding. So. The essentially is the idea of academic incubation where the incubation cell of an academic institute provides the space for an idea to breathe along with the required resources like training and infrastructure in exchange for a small stake in the company or other conditions. So academic incubators position universities as progressive places attracting students to learn environments very differently from conventional classroom settings. And simultaneously, business look to incubators to surface an academic institution's intellectual capital and top talent. Yeah. So I'm saying, do you do you also think there has been a certain mind sh mindset shift uh, in universities and academic institutions? Because uh, a few years back, uh, these incubation centers were not very prominent. And suddenly in past four, five, six years, especially after the AIC is coming in, actual incubation centers coming in and then schools, uh, we have ATLs. Uh, do you also see the mindset shift in uh, academicians in professors in college management what's your take on that like do you see that shift happening or or or, or, or is it still not there is, is still a lot of work is required so your take on this one no whatever i have seen and experienced specifically during last four five years but the you can say efforts taken by the ministry with respect to innovation entrepreneurship and startups for our young entrepreneurs so whatsoever they have floated in the form of you can say atal incubation centers or the tinkering labs or the institutions innovation council it actually impacts the mindset of the tutors as well as the students now even students are there who are looking up to the you know their own ventures their own startups they understand the significance of having their own ventures own entrepreneurial setups and all 
so they really understand they understood that it's not about uh, like a very traditional business organization entrepreneurship is something which is actually contributing to the economy of any country and they are understanding this that what are the qualities they require what exactly they need to do this and they are very keen into setting up their own business ventures even if they are not having any business background at their family level so uh, according to me it is actually impacting the ecosystem of our institution of our you can say young minds they are actually uh, you know uh, they they uh, are actually uh, looking for their own setups on entrepreneurial ventures in the coming years and they are starting working on these from their very first day of the university education so yes it impacts a lot and yes definitely it will definitely contribute to the economy of the country awesome uh, thanks for your uh, comment on that one uh, varun i'll come next to you uh uh again i have known you for like you know really really wrong uh 91 springboard i still remember the first center that would that got got opened and then yeah, i think you became one of the biggest players in co-working space in india uh but my, my question to you is how do you position the importance of an incubator in the entire growth of a startup uh and i also want this comment from the point of view because i remember you uh maybe maybe in some conversation we discussed that 91 is not just a co-working space it's a incubator co-working kind of a thing there was a term that you uh, that you that you coined as i don't remember that so uh, your comments on to this entire incubation mentoring community uh, co-working e- ecosystem uh, it's importance yeah over to you sure 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 so i'll share a personal story when i first started off uh, when i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do with my life i had previously worked with a large corporate in the us came to india and said now what right So first of all my dad was nice enough to let me work out of his office guess what i got to use his uh, it guy who set up our internet i got to use his accountant to do my accounting um i got to use his conference room for my meetings his friends were my advisors and mentors so suddenly i had basically like this virtual incubator that had been created for me the thanks to you know being born into which family i was and my father being an entrepreneur so when i was the beneficiary of this i basically realized i went through two three rounds of entrepreneurship and finally hit upon something that worked for me and i i just said like if this is something that has worked for me can't this work for everybody so it became my mission from that point on to create that environment for as many people as i could and that was actually the birth of 91 springboard and it's a progression of that same idea that we're building at build 3 so um how can we make it as simple for an entrepreneur to do what they're trying to do the magic sauce right um learning how to set up internet or learning how to uh, uh, uh lease their own office space is usually not the magic of any entrepreneurial venture so what all in their journey can we standardize and simplify and give to them relatively simply and which are some of the magic sauce items that you know we can't do for them but can we make that journey a little bit easier by connecting the right mentors or the right investors or the right partners as vendors etc uh, or do the right brainstorming sessions or connect the right frameworks whatever that is so in many cases which they don't need to do as their magic sauce the goal is to uh, do that for them and in cases which is their magic sauce can we make that journey a little bit easier that's what 91 springboard had set out to do and now build 3 continues to do that with a much narrower focus as in it's just sustainability and impact oriented founders and we go much deeper um there's a team of nine people at build 3 today and we only work with 5 to 10 startups every year so it's uh, we put 20 to 40 hours a week with our founders coming on almost like co-founders awesome uh vipul i'll come next to you uh, i'll rather tweak my question a bit uh you are somebody who invests into startups uh, and of course you can definitely comment on onto the role of incubators but also can you quickly comment on role of uh a uh, investor come mentor like the first investor lead investor into the growth of a startup because the first investor the lead investor becomes a very critical part of a of a company and he really hand holds company at multiple levels uh, plus your your also comment uh, uh, on a uh, role of communities like eo and uh, uh, you know you are associated with other other uh, uh, networks like indian angel networks all of these so quick comment on role of incubation mentoring 
investing communities on onto the growth and success of startups uh, vipul i'll pass it to you sure so i i started investing close to about 10 years back when i sold uh, my previous company uh back then there weren't too many incubators and you know we had to do a lot of hard work because a lot of people came in with a uh, very interesting ideas and uh, uh you know you didn't know uh, because see you need a good idea you need good execution capabilities you need a, the person to be persevering and then you know if you are lucky maybe then there'll be a next round and then there'll be a next round and there are many other things what an incubator does uh, for an investor is uh, they do that initial bit for you uh, you know what they will do is uh, you know they will put up a, a ecosystem or an environment where they know that you know uh, these guys are uh, doing better than the others and uh, so for us a lot of our pipeline actually comes in from either an incubator or an accelerator where they come in and they give us uh, you know they give us a little more support uh, uh, in terms of selection of companies uh, before the incubators were there i i mean I, you know i you remember uh, i i i uh, i came to you once uh, for your for help to get the deck made for one of my investee companies which is uh, within entrepreneur network which is also uh, a client of 91 springboard in, in goa uh, you know when when uh, kanika came to me she was just on the idea stage uh, her problem was that women you know they break out of, they get out of employment uh, when on childbirth and then they don't know what to do and how to get back into work and she wanted to start a platform where you know women could get back into work uh, what being in an incubator has done for her is she got the idea uh, you know uh, she got a mentor the ment- uh, uh, the mentor was from the industry and was able to help her polish the idea the second thing was that you know once you start running your idea you realize uh, you know after 3 months it's going nowhere uh, you know maybe you need a lot of support or you realize after 3 months it's really exploding when you, when you are in a you know group with, with a group of other people who are doing the same thing you learn a lot from each other you uh, you know you get to know each other's best practices you have stories to share and that that's what you know helps you go forward also what it does is it gives you some sort of initial validation because you know when, when you're talking to people you just i mean you know how uh, you know you say okay i am su- supported by x and that x helps uh, you know give you that confidence uh, to see you through the leaner times so i i think this is where maybe the the role of incubators or accelerators is very very vital um you spoke about communities and i i think it's really interesting i i joined eo for example when i was maybe close to about 30 so about uh, 17 18 years back and i can tell you that you know it gave a lot of learning from the side uh, you know as uh, as opposed to you know when 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 you are in a formal relationship where somebody is just telling you something from the top and you are just replying back you you are you know your your uh, your understanding you know partly what the person is saying because the guy has so much of experience they are assuming your understanding uh, but when you have a bunch of people who are around you you know you can share whatever's happening uh, with them and they come back and they tell you that look you know this is what i understood somebody else say something else and then when you combine that you know like that that elephant in the story you know somebody understands some part but when you piece it all together you get the whole elephant in front of you so I, I think that's where being in the, you know an eo or, or an indian angel network really helps you awesome uh, thank you for commenting on that pretty pretty elaborated uh, pretty interesting uh, uh, i shall come to you next uh, because i want your comment onto the, on onto, onto uh, you know the uh, relation between an incubator and an incubatory thing uh, but of course i think i think uh, uh, if if you're listening to this conversation today all those who are who are joining us today right now and all those who are even going to watch it later uh, uh, this is how actually a funnel works right you you are into early stages you go to an incubator then you go to a little <coughs> mature incubator or an accelerator and then you of course go to an investor to kind of raise capital and uh, uh, you know i'm i'm pretty sure you will be finding tons of value in the conversation we are having today so my next question to you uh, uh, dr isha is is uh, what is that one thing you look for in incubatory while incubating them i'm sure you you would have a checklist of of multiple parameters but what is that one key thing you look uh, into uh, into a startup before incubating them and what is one thing they look for i think that it's also very important for uh, uh, you know for listeners uh, to give them a perspective on what a startup is looking for in an incubator right so if you can comment on to these two especially from the academic incubation point of view 
So if I'm talking about the business incubator, it helps startup incubators jump start their performance. So however, it is important for them to do their homework well before moving on. So unless a startup is uh, doesn't have a strong team, it is unlikely that its business model will get more refined and feasible towards the end of the incubation program. So one of the most important things for an incubator is its community. Starting a new business is a daunting task and it takes its own sweet time to get a steady result. Hence, you should look for an incubator with a community environment where you can help others and people can help you as well. And and what do you look into a startup while incubating them? What is that one critical North Star or a, or a North Matrix that you look for? So, uh, if I'm talking about the incubator for a startup, so basically we will look. We should look for the incubator that can provide us with the mentorship, expertise, then uh, who can provide us with the access to investors, and in some cases, working capital as well in the form of seed funding or working capital in the form of a loan as well. So definitely it is the must requirement if we are looking for an incubator for our startup that we must get some, you know, uh, uh, during specifically during our early stages, that mentoring, guidance, then co-working space as well, including some seed funding. Sure. No, my question was, what do you look for? Like, I'm sure you must be incubating startups day in, day out. You must be talking to entrepreneurs, uh, especially student entrepreneurs, very early stage folks. So what is that one key matrix? Like, what is that one make or break for you uh, on, on which, like, as I said, you might have a checklist. You might have 10, 20, 30 parameters, whatever those are, that, that whatever that number is. But what is that one key thing or one critical thing that you look for in an entrepreneur before you take a call uh, that, yes, this is the person I want to work with and this is the person I want to incubate. So what's that one key matrix for you? So the very important thing is the idea for the incubation, whether the idea is unique, whether the idea is innovative, and secondly, their passion about that idea, whether they are actually going to do this or not. So sometimes it happened that people or the budding entrepreneurs come up with very good and very wonderful ideas as well, but they don't have that passion to go through that idea because if I'm talking about the entrepreneurial setups or this, it requires lots of efforts and lots of patience along with the hard work. So that's the most important thing. That one is the uh, innovative idea, unique idea with their passion and their zeal to run their entrepreneurial setup. Okay. And and just quickly continuing on to the same question. Uh, are you also sector agnostic or are you some domain specific? What is uh, that uh, thesis there? No, uh, if I'm talking about the domain specific, usually a typical startup journey has three stages. That is the ideation, growth and expansion. So at each stage, startup tends to perform a wide range of activities that help them grow. And every successful startup aims to minimize the time frame to advance from one stage to the other. So an ILM University Gurugram is not sector or state specific when choosing startups. And we develop new entrepreneurs and contribute to the economic and social development of the entrepreneurial ventures through the pre-incubation of projects initiated in the university. Sure. Uh, thanks, Varun. I'll come to you. The same question goes to yeah, you. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I I'm wanted sure. to answer it. <laughs> yes, because you would have a much bigger funnel, and I'm sure you being a startup rock star, your funnel would be uh, much, much, much higher. I, I'll, I'll just quote this guy here. Uh, there's a company called Wedding Filmer, uh, Vishal Punjabi. I was just watching their video, uh, and he says we get 1500 applications per month for getting the film shoot done and uh, every year we only pick up 25 projects so look mm. at the volume i'm sure that was yeah, yeah, yeah. to you at build three for startups uh, over to you Arun. your your comment on to that one first of all startup rockstar bolke you're just saying i'm old now in different words <laughs> better, better. <laughs> uh, but uh, just going back to an earlier question you just posed to doctor um what we found that is a, is a, an effective way to find the highest probability of success founders and startups is a, finding a person who has the fire in the belly. And by that, I mean like a high level of capability and commitment. And what tends to happen is at an early stage, it's an idea. They maybe haven't tested it as they start to build stuff out. Frequently, they realize there are gaps in what they had originally thought and what's going to happen. And as is called in the industry, they will pivot, right? So what you're really doing is investing in the quality of the person, their thought process, their resourcefulness, their leadership, their ability to problem solve. And that's what I mean by capability and commitment. That's what we look for, number one. 
the idea that we first start with and what they end up with can be poles apart and that's okay right so i just wanted to answer that one first uh, did you have another question for me sorry uh no my question was that then what do you what do you look for primarily and what's your funnel like what's your approach like before you ah, even yeah, make them okay. part of build three yeah right okay so um our funnel is not as large as what you just said um we tend to get between 50 and 100 applications a month and we accept one uh, new startup partner every two months um let's say let's say one and a half to two months right so that's basically our journey and in terms of our process um i just talked about capability and commitment those are the primary um uh, uh characteristics of the founder that we're looking for apart from that secondary characteristics that we're looking for is commercial viability of the enterprise that they're currently considering and compatibility with us and what i mean by compatibility with us is um are they at an idea stage or all the way up to product market fit anything beyond that uh, which could be called like uh, uh, expansion uh, and scale up and those sorts of stages we typically not involved in those stages we write checks up to 1 crore so we want them to be um, uh, at a size where we can invest that one crore and it would make a material impact uh we typically want to work hands on with them and not just write a check so hopefully they value that in their journey and they want us to do that with them um we're also hoping that they can come and work with us uh for several weeks like 2 to 3 months typically in goa so that we can have a tight um uh, camaraderie we can actually develop a deep understanding for each other's strengths and abilities so we can call on each other when we need each other uh, so we're hoping to be that type of a partner and um, we just go through a 2 to 3 month journey to make sure that uh, sorry 1 uh, to 2 month journey to make sure that we are fulfilling these things for each other and when that is established then we formally create a document exchange some cash exchange some equity and start building together uh awesome uh i think i think two for me two key takeaways uh, other than everything else was one crore check in goa i think if you give this to a founder <laughs> i think <laughs> he's going to be in your queue a uh, people i'll come next to you you have been investing into so many companies uh what's your experience like what do you look uh, you know especially in a capacity of a, of a, of an angel investor we had a conversation with uh, uh you know in the previous panel with a few folks uh, who represent angel networks and uh even even vcs but as an angel investor when you are yourself looking at a startup and it's a very one person driven call uh not very thesis driven correct me if i'm wrong there so what is that one north star for you that you look look in a founder before you take a call of cutting a check and then of course working th- with them very very closely so what is that you look for so uh you know when you asked the question i was kind of thinking about the first investment i made um it was with the indian angel network and uh, there this guy he came in and i was very clear at that point of time that i'm only going to invest in a particular sector i'd done a lot of reading i i'd spoken to a lot of people and everyone said that look uh, you know this is the space to go in and suddenly this guy comes in and uh, you know he's got this dosa printer and uh, he which doesn't fit into any of my investment thesis uh, or what i'd read and it just that he comes in with a lot of passion and he's got this machine outside and uh, you know i i remember it, it the like you know the who's who of the investing world was kind of sitting there and everyone was like wow you know I, and he was looking to raise i i don't remember back in the day very small amount like either 40 or 80 lakhs or something like that and we just loved the guy for you know what he brought to the table he had been at it for about 4 uh, 5 years he bet his house he not given up you know he had that perseverance he had that energy so i think a lot of uh, you know what uh, i mean what the guys before me have said that uh, you know you you look for these things and uh, you know you definitely look for I, so personally for me the top two things that i look for are like agility and perseverance uh, you know uh, i mean i what happens is that a lot of i mean i i you know again while we were talking out thinking of so many investments where you know we started with x and right now the company is not even doing y it's doing b or c i mean you know they've changed but they are now uh, supremely successful 
and you know the the agility of the entrepreneur the the guy's ability to not give up and constantly look for new ways to do the thing i i think that's something that's uh, very important uh, for me and then how do you do that when you are see when you when you're doing that with a company that's 2 3 years in the running it's easy to do but when you're looking at it for for a company that's coming on idea stage and it's very early you know we we try and i mean this, this is where like my hr background uh, kind of helps me because you know you try and look for something that they've done you know maybe maybe in school maybe in college you know maybe maybe they've been the the president of the debating society or you know sometimes even somebody comes and tells i remember investing in a, in in a company where the guy said you know i i was convinced that this is the lady i want to marry and i kept chasing her for 6 months and we gave him plus points for that also we obviously you know between us we have a checklist of 10 to 12 uh, things that we definitely want in a person before we before we look at investing in them but uh, you know i mean i i hope this answers your question yeah yeah ab- ab- absolutely i think i uh, i also love that part where you said this is the lady that i want to marry <laughs> I think founders fall in love with their ideas and their businesses, and eventually it's a it's a marriage between the two. Uh, awesome, uh, uh, Doctor Ishal, come to you next. Uh, now I want to go a little specific with 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 uh, what you do individually again, uh, and maybe I want uh, to to you know you to pinpoint a little more specifics. Uh, uh, although although uh, thanks Vipul and uh, uh, you know uh, Varun for bringing that up, uh, I had a question uh, about how much or what kind of checks do you also write. I'll come on. to the numbers part as well in some time so that uh, that i can uh, put in a number and then you i'll i'll attach your email id and sell it to somebody who is willing to pay me enough to give out your details <laughs> i'm just kidding i'll not do that <laughs> okay dr ish i'll come to you so uh, uh, you know uh, you you spoke about the community and how how important is the community for uh, for entrepreneur student entrepreneur at, at such an such an early stage how are you cu- uh, building this culture of community at 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 the university level uh, Uh, in your incubator uh, so so if you can quickly comment on that and also if you can give me some specifics about the support you offer you spoke about that a bit but now i think it's a very specific question so i want you to reiterate onto that so one how are you building the culture of community at the that the university level uh, and then what kind of other support uh, entrepreneurs can get uh, you know at at your incubation center uh, yeah uh, uh, you can you can answer that yeah uh, you are on mute you will have to unmute yourself uh, yeah I hope I am audible now. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. So if I am talking about the community, first of all, ILM University gives a framework, as I said, that and specialized help to the understudies having imaginative plans to change into new products and services for the betterment of society. So we likewise help all the applicants with the mentoring, planning, and execution of their startup idea into a genuine business. So in this way, we are providing them a community. where students are interacting with each other where budding entrepreneurs are interacting with each other we are taking the help of industry mentors and you know very good uh, you can say established entrepreneurial ventures established incubators who are helping our students in providing the mentorship who are there to provide their expertise so that they can work on their startup with a you know very crisp uh, you can say because sometimes it happen we are having a wonderful idea we are having that passion to go for our idea we are having that zeal but sometime while executing the idea because of lack of expertise and mentoring usually startups fail so that's what we are focusing on so we are providing our budding entrepreneurs within a community a help from the very expert professors who are having good experience in entrepreneurial ventures we are providing them with the industry mentors we are arranging mentoring workshops time by time for our budding entrepreneurs and we are also providing them with the you know access to investors and then access to you can say the resources they require whether it is the physical infrastructure at the university they required some lab they required some technical help they require some financial help so all of these things we are providing in our university alm university through our you can say the community culture awesome pretty interesting uh, vipul i'll come next to you uh, uh, the the same question but maybe in a little different uh, flavor uh, how you as an investor have seen the change in the community creation right uh, uh, this time maybe you i don't I, I, maybe you can you can comment from the investor community point of view but i also want to see uh, how the community 
uh, or the community aspect has changed from the startup point of view because I, because i think there's so, so many support communities now even to support early stage and growth stage entrepreneurs especially academic incubator right you, you there's a bunch of folks sitting there and they're willing to support so in your in your uh, you know uh, uh, such a decade long uh, journey of uh, of an active investor how do you think that community aspect has come in kicked in and how is it changed the entire ecosystem your comment on that what's your observation like sure so i i actually uh, i've been kind of uh, involved uh, i i raised money uh, way back in 98 uh from from a bunch of funds in new york and we tried to do a startup and uh, from there so i i, I actually will uh, look at it over 23 24 years i i think uh, when when i came back to india which was in early uh, early 2000 uh you know doing a startup was not something that people would even have in their mind like there be very few people very selected bunch of guys wanting to do it to you know maybe 2011 12 you could still see people talking about it uh, but you know if i ever spoke to somebody you know whose kids were doing a startup there was always like this concern especially people coming from a middle class background uh, to you know over the past 6 7 years uh, you know where people say with a lot of pride that my son has done a startup or my daughter has done a startup and she's failed twice and she's doing a third one so i i i would first say i mean though i know that's not your question but i would say just the acceptability of people coming starting businesses and failing has increased a lot and now why has this increased this has increased largely because of the support of you know uh, uh, companies like varuns and ilm uh, you know where where they 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 made it easy for entrepreneurs to come in to try things and to fail and uh, i i i think you you spoke about the uh, atal incubator i think they are also now starting to play their role because uh, in in let's say maybe 5 to 6 years back startup investing and even people doing startup was a little elitist in the sense maybe people from the best colleges got funded or or you know kind of made it into an incubator but now there's a big big competition between incubators themselves you know, there's so many of them that each one is trying to get talent so depending on where you are so somebody like varun may probably get in like a you know a, a bunch of you know 50 people and out of them you know maybe he can choose one or two or, or I, if I, if i heard it right maybe out of 100 he chooses one you know whereas maybe some of the other incubators uh, you know they they maybe you know they're, they're smaller towns and uh, they, they you know they pick up from whatever is available so what i what i'm basically trying to say is that the the whole ecosystem is now available at the grassroots level i remember i think it was 2013 or 14 you know i i i i'm part of a program that tai runs called uh, tai the knot which is like a shark tank of uh, version of india and i remember that there were uh, 10 companies and there were five of us who were looking to invest over one night and that was one show to now if you see i i don't know what the show is called but there there is this thing that uh, uh, ashneer and all those guys are in uh, I'm sorry i forgot the name where shark you know, tank is become yeah so i i don't know what it's called sorry but you know the, the indian version of shark tank you know what i'm talking about but yeah. what i'm trying to say is that you know uh, th- this whole thing around startup has been has become mainstream and it has become mainstream and at the absolute grassroots level because of the number of people who are now ready to support this ecosystem of startups correct so uh, yeah in, in fact i i definitely uh, agree agree to that in fact if you even if you look at the program side of it uh, you have horses stable then you have shark tank india then you have five more different programs and some people are even attempting to do a web series around it i think it's 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 a pretty phenomenal uh, varun i'll come to you uh, for your for your comment onto the same question and then maybe we can we can we can uh, quickly pick up two three more questions and then you can wrap uh, uh, you have again coming uh, calling you the startup rock star <laughs> startup veteran <laughs> i think i think co-working space as an anime springboard has played a really really big role uh, and i think uh, build 3 now works with a selective uh, folks uh, but i i'm sure the community aspect would still be there so building a community on the ground with 91 to now uh, building a community of builders with build 3 what should take on the community aspect and how it how and and i also want you to maybe talk on to one important part that how indirectly community helps in mentoring and incubation right it's not a formal incubation but a lot of support comes from the community when it, when you when you build a startup you know we always say that startup is a very very lonely journey right so yeah. what kind of support in terms of mentoring in terms of incubation in terms of uh, you know uh, networking comes from the community aspect if you can quickly comment on to that one 
Yeah, no, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, uh, communities are incredibly knowledgeable and because they are bound together by a common interest or a common goal, they are more likely to support each other. In what way, shape or form, constantly surprises me, right? Like both Vipul and I are part of EO. EO is a community, right? And we get put into these smaller groups called forums where six to eight of us typically, um, all entrepreneurs come together to meet once a month. And now in these conversations, we're supporting each other with contacts, with experiences, with ideas. And that's so incredibly powerful to us, not only in our professional lives, but also our personal. So that's an example of a community coming together to really enhance our personal and professional lives. And we've seen exactly the same thing happen for our particular community at Build3, which is around sustainability and impact. So these people are just motivated towards those sorts of uh, businesses, but the fundamental needs as individuals and our needs to build our business are quite similar. Just because now you come from the same context, you're able to understand each other a little bit better, but it's the same sort of like bits and bobs that are required and the information that's exchanged that I notice in these conversations. So communities are incredibly, incredibly powerful. I've seen them work in many different ways. At 91 Springboard, um, we used to organize several uh, community activities that were basically, we said we'll solve for a trust. We'll help bring people together. They'll celebrate together. They'll enjoy together. They'll either um, uh, play a sport together or maybe it'll be a, 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 a singing competition or an atakshari or something like that. And we do these things. And what that did was it created trust and awareness of who all is there. And when there was a business need, it created the comfort to actually reach out and carry out that transaction. Right? And we've seen this time and time again. So can't stress this enough. Communities is how humans work. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's shift some gears and let's start talking about the mentoring aspect now. Right. And uh, uh, mentoring, I would say, is both extremely overrated and extremely underrated. Uh, I think I think uh, there's, a, there's a very, very large spectrum when it comes to mentoring. If you if you find uh, on if you go on LinkedIn, I, I think everybody is either a startup mentor or is looking for a mentor. Right. <laughs> Just to kind of plug that in. So uh, uh my question number one, I would rather, uh, you know, open it for the forum and then we can, you can go one by one because these are a couple of common questions, but I'm sure your individual perspective or individual organization perspective will be very, very important. So how do you find a right startup mentor? Because finding a mentor is a very, very big challenge. Uh, every startup wants to find one. Uh, there are enough on LinkedIn, but still <laughs> you somehow don't get to get one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, Dr. Isha, your take on how how can startups find uh, a great mentor? Maybe you can speak about a few characteristics of the process. And I think I'll open it for the forum uh, one by one. So Dr. Isha, over to you. Uh, you're in a given unmute. You'll have to unmute yourself. So if you're talking about to finding a good mentor for our startup, so the very first thing is to select mentors thematically because we all of us know that mentorship is really very, very important for the setting up of any entrepreneurial ventures. So pick up mentors just a few steps ahead of you. Basically, you have to cross check whether you are comfortable and whether that person is how much expertise. So thematically, you have to select your mentor and then find a mentor by understanding your worth and your products and services in the area, then broaden your definition of a mentor mentee situation and get the most value from a mentor and come to each meeting with a prepared agenda. So that's how you will be able to get a good mentor because it is not that easy to get a good mentor for your startup because sometimes it happened that you are having a very good person to get a mentor through, but the scene is that the industry you are looking up for that particular person is not having that wonderful idea into the very depth of that industry. So it is very important that how you are selecting your mentor. So uh, if, if, if you want to find a, a right mentor, how should you approach? So in this way, there are some, uh, you can say, entrepreneurs who have their own idea that if you are looking for and your entrepreneurial life, so it is, you will be fortunate if you get a very good mentor who can help you in setting up your expertise. So 
uh, we know about location we know about choosing what types of mentors we would like so uh, if i'm talking about myself i have uh, I, I love to approach mentoring by looking at it thematically and asking myself two questions that what skills do i want to learn and then who are the smart people in my network that i can replicate so this there is this is a variation on the typical mentorship idea where one models the life on the lives of those smart successful individuals they aspire to so although uh, there is indeed value in generalized mentoring i think that maximum value comes from specific tailored mentoring and a great example of this is the way like no, number of people number of budding entrepreneur picked up sales so it it is very much required to pick your mentor thematically then many great mentors out there exist all in varying degree of success so often it's important to select someone who is professionally a few levels above you so they will likely remember the situation and the exact environment you are working in much more clearly than an industry giant so it will give you tips that uh, that are much actionable for you individually and you will also connect to them more clearly having the confidence to ask them the gritty questions discuss the minor details that you may struggle to do with somebody that you idolize greatly so sure. the key to creating successful mentorship is to offer reciprocal value as well like rather than just asking someone to help you or to mentor you approach them from the angle of exchanging value giving your potential mentor something which is of value to them so typically this won't be monetary in fact successful people value differing perspectives and as a young person the best thing you can offer is a unique perspective from a youth angle interesting and often yeah interesting uh, varun your take on this one uh, i think it's a it's a very very broad definition in the sense i think the, the multiple ways what's your approach uh, on 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 this mentoring aspect yeah so about 2 years ago i read this book that essentially changed how i work with people who i consider a partner whether it is a co-founder whether it's a vendor whether it's a mentor whether it's an investor whether it's in personal life or professional life this is a framework that i just find is universally works the book is called reinventing organizations written by frederick lalu and he talks about when you're looking at joining hands with people look at three things one is fit for purpose second is fit for organization and third is fit for role and fit for purpose means that you want to achieve the same thing you want to get to the same destination in this case if we are trying to build a large community of successful entrepreneurs in the sustainability and impact space i want to interact with people who care and want to achieve a similar end goal fit for organization means you have the same values right uh, for some people it can be trust for some people it can be integrity or more specifically it can be like they like to use technology they like to um document things or they don't believe in highly structured organization they like decentralized ownership different things but you have to have a similar set of values and the third one is fit for role which in a particular example um if it's mentoring in a particular area they need to have knowledge and past precedence in that subject matter to be an effective uh, mentor who has fit for role uh, for you so basically they have to care about uh, if i was to find a good mentor for myself i'd want them to care about sustainability and impact entrepreneurship and building that ecosystem uh, we'd have to have similar values uh uh things that we consider important and how we go about our personal and professional lives and they would have necessary skill to help me in areas that are my blind spots and help me in my journey and help me grow and of course as dr isha said it needs to be a quid pro quo there needs to be reciprocity it can't just be take 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 and no give so that's my learning and how i'd go about it interesting uh vipul you are take on this one so uh i've been now uh... I I started being mentored uh, around 2003. I remember my first mentor was uh, a, a person called Mohit Goel. Uh, he was part of uh, the Indus Entrepreneurs. Uh, then uh, I went to uh, Sanjeev uh, uh, from Nokri, uh, who I kept consulting at different area aspects of my life. So I I've been a mentor, and uh, uh, then once I sold my business. 
uh, you know, I felt I had time and, at hand and, uh, you know, one of my mentors suggested to me that why don't you start mentoring uh, because as a way of giving back. Uh, I, can, I can tell you, like, you know, when I look back, uh, I mean, you know, we already have what you should be doing as a mentor. I thought I should, uh, you know, uh, talk about what you should not be doing as a mentor, uh, as, as, you know, when you look for a mentor. Number one, some, there are two kinds of mentorship arrangements. One is an ongoing arrangement. And one is a one-off arrangement. Like, let's say you have a typical, you have a, a particular issue for which you need someone to mentor you, and that will happen for three months and six months and get over. So, I, I think if you can separate the two, I, I think it will be much better. Second, a lot of times, you know, when people are looking for a mentor, they're basically looking for someone who can hook them up at ten different places. I, I don't think that 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 could be a byproduct, but I, I don't think that should be the main driver. And the third is like, you know, I, I, what I do is, uh, you know, ever since 2012, I, I take two people on uh, every year to mentor for two years. So as a result, what happens is that I learn a lot from them and of course, hopefully they learn from me. Um, what I found is that the, the guys who uh, get the best value and who are the guys who are ready to do a lot of things for, are the guys who are very consistent. They make a timetable. They'll make sure they'll, you know, email me before the meeting, they'll email me after the meeting, they'll tell me what all, you know, they've implemented. So, and, and, and they keep giving this feedback on what's working for them. Because otherwise what happens is that uh, if your mentor is not understanding you well enough, uh, you know, they, they, they are probably seeing what you're, what, they're listening to whatever you're saying with, with the lens of their own experience. So as a result, what happens is that, uh, you know, if you've not, if you don't have this constant feedback loop with them, they, they've probably not understood it. They've given you a certain uh, advice or a suggestion. And then, you know, maybe you've not done it or you've not implemented it well. And then this just goes off. So doing it in a structured manner, especially for an ongoing mentorship is extremely critical. Interesting. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll be with you on this one, uh, Vipul. And I also have an additional question because I think you partially covered my next question in what you were saying. Uh, what uh, uh, we, we have often spoken about uh, startup mentoring from the mentor's perspective, but we really talk about mentoring from the startup perspective, right? Uh, 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 and as I said, you, you partially covered. So my question is, what are the characteristics of a great mentee? Like, right? How can you be a good mentee or how can you be a great mentee? So if you can also comment onto that one, that would be great. So Vipul, I'll keep, I'll, I'll I'll be with you in the reverse second. And pick one thing that I've learned from you, uh, which is, you know, the, the first thing is you need to make yourself totally vulnerable. You need to trust your uh, mentor completely. Uh, that does not mean that, you know, whatever the mentor is saying is right. But when you're in that meeting, you need to go in totally with that trust that, you know, th this person, whatever they are saying, they're saying it out of care and love for you rather than somebody who's coming in with a vested interest. So I, I think that just that openness, being vulnerable is the first thing and the most important thing. The second is you need to show that you're serious. Uh, third, you know, like, like I mentioned, you need to have this quick feedback mechanism because, uh, you know, like, like if I met someone today, you know, I maybe remember what I've discussed with him for the next two days. But if 15 days later, he's going to come back and tell me, oh, by the way, you said this and, you know, this is what I've done and this is... So I, I, I think if they just structure it and, and uh, so what I do with most of my ment uh, mentees is I keep a uh, Google sheet and what, whatever we discuss they keep feeding it over there and they keep updating. So what it does is it gives this structure and, and there is accountability on both sides. So even if I promise that I'll do something for them that is also on the sheet, it's there with the date so it works well on both sides. Interesting. Uh, Varun, your take on this one. Yeah, I think um, when I've really enjoyed my interactions with people who've sought me out is when um, the simple things like setting a meeting, showing up on time, being prepared with a bunch of questions, maybe sending me a pre-read, like some of those things really work for me and show me the seriousness of the other person. Because if I'm going to take our time out of my day, which I'm more than happy to, I just want to make sure the other person is not taking me for granted and is going to at least listen, right? Like people said, I'm not expecting them to act on everything I say, but I do want them to come prepared to the meeting, come on the meeting, come to the meeting on time and listen to at least everything I have to say, engage me. And in every subsequent conversation, sort of build layers 
um, uh, because if you've talked about something, I want to be given an update the next time so that I'm uh, now vested and I'm updated on how the story has progressed. So we can now talk about part two and part three and part four of that journey. And that is a joy for me also to go on that journey with somebody who's serious, who's professional and somebody who's giving it their all and is keeping you in the loop. So that's what makes it really fun for me. Very interesting. Uh, Dr. Isha, your take on this one. So uh, if I'm talking about the good mentee, then the first thing they have to remember that it's important to remember that your mentor is a volunteer. They have more experience in the field. They are taking time out of their schedule to help you develop and grow. So there must be healthy boundaries and respect in your relationship. This means a good mentee you should be aware of and you know one, one should minimize time wasters that occur during the meetings and it is also definitely being sure that uh, they have to show the gratitude for the time and advice and never cut rudely or attempt to downplay their knowledge. Secondly, the mentor cannot do everything for you. So they can only give you tools and techniques. So being a mentee, they must be willing to take charge of their learning by asking questions and actively participating in the conversations to become a good mentee. Plus, they should absorb all the knowledge they can as asking the mentor to repeat themselves frequently is a waste of their time as well. So mentorship does not automatically establish trust between uh, the mentee and the mentor. So it must be developed and nurtured. And obviously, both the parties, that means the mentor as well as the mentee, need to work to establish trust at the beginning of the relationship and having trust can open up a channel of communication which is important to the success of the mentorship again the, the mentee has to be respectful of the mentor's time um, the mentor is a guide so set realistic expectations with your mentor and come to each meeting with a, a prepared agenda and be open about your needs as a mentee and provide timely feedback to your mentor as well and definitely the mentee has to recognize the mentor's limitations as well because the mentor may be phenomenal but they will have a limit to their knowledge and abilities so don't get frustrated because they cannot help you but talk with them and work in areas where they can so if you need guidance beyond that which your mentor can give you ask for the recommendations to help you find others who have the necessary skills and definitely take appropriate risk and the mentee should be flexible to learn. Interesting. Thank you everybody for your take on this one. I'm sure this last conversation between how to be a great mentor and how to be a great mentee will help a lot of young folks watching this to kind of, uh, you know, bridge the gap and get started on their mentoring and incubation journey. Uh, we already touched like a one hour mark. So I'll quickly now start wrapping it up. Uh, uh, in the end, I just have one question from each one of you and it's a closure question. Uh, one last piece of, piece of advice you want to give to our audience members and to entrepreneurs in general you're working with number one. Uh, number two, most interestingly, you can also talk about how can people reach out to you if they want to reach out to you and uh, what's your engagement model like uh, if, you, if you are looking to uh, get more entrepreneurship support and, and just just kind of plug in your things, right? I want you to uh, put on a spotlight and, 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 and if you can plug in your things, that, that is absolutely fine. So uh, one general advice uh, for the founders watching this one and... Uh, uh, how can they reach out to you and your engagement model? Uh, Dr. Isha, we'll start with you and then we can we can move back to the gentleman. Yeah. So if you're talking about the advice, then I, I simply want to say that please be your own biggest critic. Learn how to market your business. Be ready to pivot and don't expect good results overnight. So focus on the MVP. Fail fast and often and just focus on solving one problem at a time and have a sustainable financial plan as well as the business plan so you can reach me out i am associated with ilm university gurugram so my email id must be provided by the uh, organizers in the window so you can reach me out through that yeah so what i'll what i'll do is uh, if you if all of you three allow i'll put your linkedin and email ids in the in the in the description of the youtube video yeah, so people can uh, you know uh, reach out to, to you by linkedin and email sure, id sure. whatever is convenient to each one of you what on your take on this one one piece of advice that you want to share with the founders as a closure note and maybe how can they reach out to you and what's your engagement model like yeah i think i've found uh, modern day media over glorifies entrepreneurship, um, especially the funding side of it. So 
I would suggest that uh, people embark on this journey um, when they have a clear insight into a problem they've personally faced and they have uh, an idea of how they'd like to solve it and then passionately and diligently follow that dream because that can frequently be a decade or more uh, before you get to a solution and a business that delivers that solution effectively. So don't think of it as a quick and dirty way to get money, but a way, a passionate journey to sort of deliver a benefit that you'd love to see other people also receive. So that's uh, my general advice in terms of think, um, my details. I, uh, my company is called Build3. Our website is www.build3.org and I'm available at vc at build3.org. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Vipul, I'll pass it to you. One I'll, I'll go with the easier advice. one. I'm, I'm, I'll go with the easier one. I'm on vp at wow.lc. So vp at wow.lc. Uh, as far as, and I'm on LinkedIn, so you can, um, I mean, you can post me a message there. Uh, as far as, uh, I, I think, uh, I, I, I have, uh, I'm, I'm just going to share my, from my personal experience, I've failed in, I think, 12 different companies or different startups before, before I managed to sell my 13th one. So my, my simple advice is work hard, don't give up. And maybe, uh, you know, going with the theme of the day, get yourself a good mentor or a coach or a guide or someone who's invested in your success and, you know, who will keep guiding you through this hours of hard work. It's not easy. You know, it's not easy, but it, it gives you a lot of joy if you're able to uh, get it going. So, you know, uh, work hard and don't give up. Awesome. Uh, thanks, everybody. What I'll quickly now do is, first of all, uh, uh, for, let, me, let me thank each one of you for being here today and uh, sharing all these insights with uh, all the audience members. I'm sure uh, this video will propagate on uh, Facebook. We'll be also sharing it on different social media platforms. We'll, we'll give the links to you as well. Uh, feel free to share it on social media. I'm sure this will help uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in early stages, learn about incubation, mentoring. And I'm sure you all, all of you have done tons of uh, golden nuggets here today. So I'm sure that will be utilized. Uh, in the end, I just we just want to thank you from EO Delhi side. Of course, two of you are EO members, uh, but uh, I really, really appreciate you giving your time today. Uh, and in the end, I quickly want to talk about GFE as well. So allow me like a minute and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap the session. So just stay back here for a second and let me quickly... Uh, uh, give the end call to action. So folks, all those who are watching this session today, uh, this session was brought to you by EO New Delhi, which is an entrepreneur's organization. And the session and the panel discussion was done to promote and talk about Global Student Entrepreneurship Award. So basically, if you are a student entrepreneur, this is something that you should be, uh, at least uh, you should know about. So uh, GFEA, which is Global Student Entrepreneurship Award, it's a premier global competition for students who own and operate a business while uh, studying in college or university and idly for uh, you know people who are full-time students who are idly full-time entrepreneurs right so GSEA supports student entrepreneurs with multiple things like mentoring recognition connection international exposure sometimes even investment opportunities and it helps the, helps them to take their business to the next level uh EO Delhi also provides prize money and a lot of support at a local chapter level. But in EO Global Finals, if you uh, are are selected, uh, student uh, uh, entrepreneurs or student uh, businesses, they can avail a total package of $100,000, which is almost $1 lakh as a prize money, wherein around $50,000, $25,000 and $10,000 is uh, prize money for first three positions, respectively. Uh, additionally, there are awards for social impact, innovation and other awards as well. I have already uh, pinned the link to apply for EO New Delhi uh, GFE competition in the comments. Uh, it's in the live chat and I'll also be putting down uh, the link to apply in the, in the description of the YouTube video. Please make sure you apply. The deadline is 10th of September. Uh, so as soon as you apply, you will be hearing from our team. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, my name is Dilnama. I was host for the session and I'm also available on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be plugging in all the email IDs and LinkedIn links in the, in the description box below. Feel free to reach out to us if you need any help uh, once again i would like to thank all the speakers for today and uh, i also would like to thank all the audience members who came here uh, uh, listen to the conversation i'm sure you must be taking a lot of golden nuggets with you today with that thank you so much everybody it's time to close the live session uh, i'm dilnava signing off and i'll see you in the next live for your new delhi gfea uh, till then 
uh good luck with your startup i'll see you soon take care bye bye everybody good night thank you